Number 38. You have just planted a sturdy two meter tall palm tree in your front lawn for your mother's birthday. Your brother kicks a 500 gram ball which hits the top of the tree at a speed of five meters per second and stays in contact with it for 10 milliseconds. The ball falls to the ground near the base of the tree and the recoil of the tree is minimal. Letter A. What is the force on the tree? All right. Uh, so I drew a little schematic over here on the left-hand side. Um, here's your brother. Kicks the ball all the way to the top of the tree. The ball weighs a 500 grams, which I converted to kilograms. Uh, the velocity of the ball when it hits the top of the tree is five meters per second. The time in contact or time of contact uh, between the ball and the tree is going to be 0 0.01 seconds. After the ball hits, it's just going to fall right down. So therefore, we know that the final velocity of the ball is basically zero at this point. You might say, well, wait a minute, isn't it traveling down? Well, yes, but that's now in the y direction. I'm assuming that it lost all of its horizontal momentum. All right. And then uh, after it makes contact, it just falls to the ground. Um, tree is this black line represents the tree. It's two meters tall. And here is uh, also reading further. We'll talk about the root system in a second. So letter A. Okay, um, we have to now think, and I kind of already gave you a big hint. Um, we have to think about, you know, how these values in the problem are related. They're giving us velocities, masses, and times, right? Time of contacts. So we have to consider how they are related. All right, and if you think back, this is a couple of chapters ago. You might say, well, it sounds a little bit like, you know, I got mass and velocity. Okay, maybe that's momentum. I have time then of contact. Where do I remember that? Is that a work thing or no, right? Work, no time there. Um, is that a impulse thing? Oh yeah, impulse, right? Remember impulse is known as the force applied to an object uh, multiplied by the time over which that force is applied, okay? So now also recall that momentum, uh, excuse me, that impulse is just simply uh, another term for change in momentum. All right, this is all from the prior chapter. So I could write change in momentum is equal to the force applied multiplied then by the time over which this force is applied. So again, I'm looking for this particular force, right? I'm looking for the force that's on the tree. Remember, the force that is applied to the tree at this particular point comes directly from the force that the ball inputs to the tree. And since I'm assuming that the ball has no momentum after the collision happens, that means that all of the force that the, or all of the momentum basically, right, that the uh, ball had got transmitted to the tree. And therefore, all of the force that the ball will input to the tree then gets placed on that tree. So expanding on change in momentum, remember it's always final minus initial. So I can say that it's the final momentum minus the initial momentum is equal to then the force. I don't know what happened to my T over here, but I just fixed it is equal to the force multiplied by the change in time, or the time over which that force is applied. Uh, expanding on this, I can skip a step here. Remember, it's just the mass of the object multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, okay, is equal to then the force applied multiplied by the change in time. I'm looking for the force, uh, and therefore I can divide out the time, okay? And look, la-di-da, we have all of our variables. So the mass, right, of the ball. Remember, this is giving us all values for the ball and whatever momentum and forces the ball had will be transmitted to the tree. And that's why when I solve this F, I can just simply say that that's also the force on the tree. So uh, the mass of the ball is gonna be 0 0.500 kilograms, the final velocity of the ball. Um, I'll say, I mean, it depends on, by the way, it depends on how you frame, you know, the problem here. I'm not worried too much about signs. I know that it starts at rest, it doesn't state that explicitly, but it must, he's kicking it. And then it ends at five meters per second if I choose this as my initial and final frame, right? I also know that uh, just before impact here, uh, that initial velocity just before impact would be five meters per second. The final then after that impact has occurred and the elapsed time has taken place, the velocity of the ball would be zero. Right, technically that is the right frame up there, so why don't we just leave that alone? But if you notice, it's all gonna be the same, all right? So um, the uh, final velocity of this ball will say, remember the frame is when it makes contact, okay? Final velocity then is zero of the ball. The initial velocity was five meters per second right before contact, all divided by the change in time over which this occurred, 
which they told us was 10 milliseconds. I converted that into just seconds, so 0 0.01, 0 0.01 seconds, and that's equal to then the force. So here we go. We're going to get a negative value, but I know you guys know what uh, that means uh, by this point, 0 0.01. So we get a value of negative 250, all right? This is the force that the tree is imparting back on the ball, okay? It's pointing back that way. And then if that's the force that the tree is imparting back on the ball, then what's the force that the ball is imparting to the tree? What's well, just the equal but opposite in direction, right? So basically the final answer here, because it says what is the force on the tree? So we have to then just take the opposite sign of this. So it's 250 newtons. Okay, great. Letter B. So it says the length of the sturdy section of the root is only 20 centimeters. Furthermore, the soil around the roots is loose, and we can assume that an effective force is applied at the tip of the 20 centimeter length. Okay, what is the effective force um, exerted by the end of the tip of the root to keep the tree from toppling? All right, so uh, interesting question. So now what we need to do here is uh, we need to, I drew in the root system here. I mean, it's not a, it's not a Picasso by any means, but just pretend that this little squiggly line is the root system, right? Here's the base of the tree. So the root system's going down uh, about 0.2 meters. Okay. And uh, what we're, what we're going to try to calculate now is we're going to try to calculate um, what effective force is, ne is necessary for these roots to apply to keep the tree from moving, okay? So what we can do, now assume that the soil is loose here, all right? But let's also assume that the axis of rotation is also at this particular point, all right? You might say, well, why axis of rotation? Well, remember, we basically have a force being applied at the top here now. I'll actually write that in here because now we have that value. So that's 250 newtons. And that's located at a distance from the axis of rotation, which I'm assuming will be right here, okay, of two meters. And then they tell us that the roots down here apply an effective force to, to help stabilize this tree at the tip, right, of that root system. So to stabilize that, what direction must, this, must these roots hold on? Well, if this force is applied, it would rotate the tree count, uh, excuse me, clockwise, and therefore these roots would have to counteract that clockwise rotation, so they would have to apply a force pointing to the right, right? Because they would then rotate the tree uh, counterclockwise. So this is the force of the roots down here. That's what I'm looking for, okay? So it's a basic simple torque problem. So when we look at this, right, we know that the sum of the torques, because the tree is going to be stationary, is uh, equal to zero. So the torque uh, of the roots, right, was the counter, was the um, counterclockwise rotation. So that's torque of the roots minus then, I'll call it the torque of the ball, that the ball imparted to the top of the tree is equal to zero. So therefore the torque that the roots must produce must balance the torque that the ball is, uh, is uh, uh, transposing onto the tree. Not transposing, transmitting. I don't know what the right word is. It's still early. Um, so now we can expand on these terms, right? So we have the perpendicular lever arm for the roots multiplied by the force that the roots apply is equal to then the perpendicular lever arm that the uh, that the uh, ball has imparted uh, to the tree, the force that is, and then multiplied by the force that that ball has imparted to the tree. Solving for this, obviously, we can just divide out RR. So FR will equal RB, FB. Let me write that a little bigger for you guys. RB, FB, all over RR. And here we go. Just plug in the numbers, right? So we have two meters multiplied by the 250 newtons, all divided them by the 0.2. Again, I converted it. They told us it was 20 centimeters in length. I converted that into meters over there. So FR, give myself a little room. FR now will be... Let's do this. So 2 times 250 divided by 0.2, 2,500. Okay, so 2,500 newtons. Okay, great. So we've got 2,500 newtons of force that those roots have to supply in order to keep the tree from rotating. 
So now it says, what could you, all right. So now it says, what could you have done to ensure, so let us see now, what could you have done to ensure that the tree does not uproot easily? Um, so one, since they told us that the roots are, you know, the, uh, the soil around the roots is loose, um, what we could do is we could compress the soil around the base of the tree down here. By compressing the soil, okay, when the tree starts to rotate by, let's say, compressing the soil around this area, the uh, tree would have to then further compress that soil, which would be hard, right, as it, as it were to rotate, if it were, which would be harder to compress already compressed soil, obviously. All right, if you've ever done a little landscaping, um, that should be pretty uh, self-evident. Um, fortunately, your uh, professor here has been a landscaper. So the best solution to this part of the problem is actually you have a tree, okay? And if you wanna help stabilize it, especially a young tree, what you do, you drive two stakes, I mean, you could do four if you want, all in uh, two dimensions, but two should be plenty. So you drive two stakes into the ground. And then what you do is you, and you make sure these are very stable. Then what you do is you apply a rope, okay? around the stake and then you apply then a ring around the tree that's padded of course because you don't want to hurt the young uh root uh, excuse me the uh young uh trunk of the tree all right and you make sure this has a decent amount of tension right so you wrap it around you pull on it a little bit apply some tension this way and then you attach it to the stake you're going to do the same thing on the other side Okay, so you apply another stake, excuse me, another uh, line of rope there, attach it around the tree, make sure there's some tension here, and now your whole system is pretty stable, actually. There's some tension in these wires, okay, or in these ro excuse me, in these ropes, um, and again, you could have done, you know, in two dimensions instead of just one dimension here in the X, you could have also done it in the I guess Z-plane, because it would be into and out of the paper here behind the tree as well. Uh, you could do the same thing and, uh, you know, probably uh, probably hit with a plane the way I used to landscape, be hit with a plane and it won't move. All right, so uh, there's the best solution. So just in case you guys were ever gardening, now you know what to do. All right, thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, please remember to subscribe. And uh, hit that like button if this helped. Definitely helps us out tremendously. Much, much appreciated. Thank you very much if you're able to do that. And I will see you in the next question. Take care.